Hello, I'm Deepak Bhatt, reporting for ACC.org from Rome, where we are at the European Society of Cardiology and having a great time. And I have the great privilege of having Professor Keith Fox, my good friend and colleague, and uh, really a star of the ESC, here to discuss some of the late-breaking trials. But before getting into late-breaking trials, what sort of stuff have you seen here that's just out of the box and might be interesting? Well, Deepak, you know me and out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. Yeah. So uh, I think there's some really exciting uh, new uh, approaches to how we may modify plaque behavior. And I, for me, one of the real challenges is that a lot of our approaches in cardiology have been dealing with putting the fire out once it's happened. That's right. That's what we do in the cath lab. But, but if we can identify uh, behave, uh, modifications within plaque that are associated with uh, susceptibility to rupture. And then how do we deliver something into plaque? And one of the exciting developments presented at this con uh, Congress is really taken from oncology. Right. It's nanoparticles that are then filled with the agent of interest that can be delivered into the plaque. So for example, we can't give corticosteroids because of all their side effects but we might be able to modify inflammatory behavior and apoptosis within plaque from a local concentration. Sure, well that's really fascinating. Maybe the future will be nanoparticles. I'm not sure what will happen if those particles get into other tissues, they shouldn't, but... Uh. Well, Deepak, you're right. You know, this is early, and uh, there are some challenges as to where they go and the controls. But I think we've got to look at just beyond the horizon. No, I agree with you. I always got to look to the future. Something else that I thought was really interesting, we're always thinking about risk scores and how to use them in real life, is the Garfield risk score. And in fact, you were involved with developing this. Could you tell the audience a little bit about it? Thanks, Deepak. So the real challenge that we face is that 28% uh, of high-risk individuals are currently not receiving anticoagulation. And half of the individuals with a chads VASC score of zero are being anticoagulated. Right. So we have a real challenge. Despite the current scores, people are not applying them. That's true. So our question was, could we derive a more user-friendly score yes. that clinicians would use to inform their judgment? Right. And what we've uh, developed is an integrated score that does more cardiovascular mortality, stroke, and bleeding all in one score. And because it's a machine learning approach, and uses a whole series of different predictors, it avoids some of the problems that there have been before. And it uses what's called coalescent, coalescent regression, so it doesn't have bias in the way that we approach the variables. Wow, you're doing nanoparticles, you're doing machine learning, you're pretty futuristic. <laughs> now that's good stuff. Now, so let's move on to a trial that I think was really interesting, the ESCAPE trial. Yes. What did you think, what, what is that and what did you think about it? Well, you know, a lot of us are being troubled by what is, what are the place of PCSK9 inhibitors? Right. They're expensive. Yep but we've got a real challenge with the FH patients and the heterozygous FH patients. That's right, familial hypercholesterolemia. Absolutely, so what this trial has shown is a really important impact on the frequency of apheresis. And, and, and if, we can if that trial reduced the frequency of apheresis by three quarters. Right, 75%. 75%. So uh, for me, I think that's a significant advance. I agree, that's an important study. Uh, the final study I wanted to ask you about is FRISC-2, which of course those results have been published, invasive versus conservative approach for ACS, showing the superior and invasive approach. But this is the 15-year follow-up, really incredible to have that sort of long-term follow-up. What did it teach us? Amazing. What this shows us is that by looking at all events, not just the time to first event, this shows that there is a sustained impact of benefit of an invasive strategy 15 years later. Terrific. That is. No, that's music to an interventionalist ear. Yeah. I knew the invasive approach was better. <laughs> Excellent. Well, now, thank you so much for all those Deepak, insights. Thank you. And thank you to the audience for joining us. And hopefully you're having a good time at home. We're certainly having fun here at Rome.